Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is McKay Allen. I'm the Inbound Marketing Manager at uh, Log My Calls, and we're really excited you're here today. Uh, we want to jump right into the presentation, but first let's go through a few announcements uh, just so you can kind of get a lay of the land here, and then I'll introduce Frederick, and off we go. The title of today's webinar is Google Insider Discusses AdWords Quality Score and CPC, and the presenter is Frederick Valles. He's the co-founder of Optimizer and a former Google AdWords evangelist. More on uh, Frederick in a moment. Uh, first, just to give you sort of a sense of who Log My Calls is, why we do these webinars, all that stuff. Uh, Log My Calls is a marketing analytics tool for phone calls. So we can tell marketers which campaigns, ads, and keywords are generating calls uh, from online sources. And then we can track actually what happens on the call as well. So which campaigns are not just generating calls, but actually are generating revenue and appointments and purchases and, and all sorts of things. So we analyze data from the calls. Now the reason we do webinars is because we, uh, our audience is, is marketers. And so we, we thought it would be a very useful way, um, first of all, to provide very good marketing content to marketers is to have various uh, marketing experts and guests, and uh, Frederick is one of those experts, and we're really excited he's here today. So today you'll notice we have this webinar uh, on our webinar library, logmycalls.com slash webinar. You'll see some of our upcoming webinars, and then you can also actually see about 80 hours of free content, recorded webinars on this library that are viewed by thousands of people every day. So you can just go find webinars on conversion rate optimization, on SEO, on anything you want, uh, just come to our webinar library and you can watch really great experts uh, present on these topics. Um, a couple of quick announcements. We do encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Type those into the little question bar on your GoToWebinar panel there. And uh, we'll immediately answer those questions uh, probably throughout uh, a little bit. And then we will... Um, I answer a lot of those at the end. So presentations about the, uh, or questions about the presentation, just type those in and we'll address those. And then also this webinar is being recorded. So uh, you'll get an email tomorrow morning that has the recording link in it. Uh, so feel free to share that on social media and within your organizations. And of course, uh, watch the webinar um, again if you wish. And finally, let's introduce, uh, let's introduce Frederick because we're really excited to have him uh, he is the co-founder of Optimizer, and he was one of the ground floor uh, people that, that really spearheaded not just AdWords quality score, but AdWords when he was working at Google. Uh, so there's, there's probably very few people on the planet who know more about AdWords, and partic particularly quality score, than Frederick. We're really excited that he's agreed to join us today. He speaks a lot all over the world. Um, Optimizer located... Um, in downtown Palo Alto, not many prettier places in the world either. So, Frederick, we're really excited you're here today. Uh, thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, thanks, McKay. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks everyone for attending today's session. So, uh, let me share my screen here and uh, load up my slides, and then we'll get right started. So, um, so yeah, I'm located here in downtown Palo Alto. I uh, used to work at Google, and I think this webinar hopefully is really relevant to people on the call today. Um, you know, if anyone here is using Log My Calls to figure out uh, what, what is generating calls for your business, a lot of ways that people drive those initial engagements with a website is probably by advertising on Google, and that specifically means buying AdWords ads. So uh, I think there's a strong connection there between what I'm talking about and the services that Log My Calls provides. So uh, I'm going to be talking about AdWords quality score, specifically what it is and how you can improve it. And if you have any questions or if you want to tweet, uh, anything that I'm talking about here, my uh, my Twitter handle there is at Silicon Valleys. I'll also share my email address with all of you towards the end of the presentation. So a little background on myself. I, I worked at Google for 10 years from 2002 until 2012. And specifically, Google hired me because they needed someone who spoke Dutch and who was able to start up AdWords in the markets in the Netherlands and in Belgium. And so I was born in Belgium, so I joined Google. Uh, but before I joined Google, I was uh, as an engineer. I got laid off in the dot-com bubble bursting in 2000, and then I became a digital wedding photographer. So I had actually been using Google myself to find new customers for my business, and I thought they had a really cool product in AdWords. So I decided that uh, I actually wanted to work at the company. 
Now, what was interesting is because I, I was an advertiser who also worked at the company, I had quite a few insights into how to really use the tools like AdWords to, to drive the most uh, success for a business. And so I brought some of that to the product team and helped them identify new ways to enhance AdWords um, and make it more usable and more useful to advertisers. And so I worked on the founding team that built the AdWords editor. Um, and, and one of my, my claims to fame, I guess, is that I was on the quality score team for about eight years. Um, and so obviously that was the team building the quality score, which wasn't always very popular with advertisers. Uh, but hopefully after today's session, you'll kind of understand why Google has a quality score and why it really does benefit all of the advertisers and the whole advertising ecosystem. Um, if anyone wants to read a little bit more about what I'm working on, uh, I blog monthly on search engine land, so check that out. And then I started uh, Optimizer, so I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and again, there's the Optimizer Twitter handle if you want to tweet anything. But so uh, as far as optimizer, um, what we Frederick, do, yes, sorry to interrupt. I think the audio is cutting in and out a bit. Is your microphone, um, does it have a short end on your computer? Is there another microphone feed maybe you can use? Because I think people are saying there's a little bit of a cutting in and out uh, back and forth. Any any improvements you can make on your end, or should we just? Um, no, give me, um, give me 30 seconds, and I'll switch over to a different line. OK. Let's give uh, Frederick about 30 seconds here. Sorry for the audio problems, everybody. We had a few people say there were some issues, so we want to we want to remedy that before we really get into the meat of the data. It's kind of interesting as well while we're waiting for Frederick about um, about how this webinar came to be. So I I, I think I actually reached out to Frederick initially on LinkedIn and. Uh, asked him if he would be uh, interested or willing in doing a webinar. He was very gracious. In addition to doing the webinar, he actually published a uh, Q&A on our blog today. So actually, check that out. Read that. It's good. Um, so blog.logmycalls.com, you can see the Q&A between Frederick and I, where he answers a little bit about his career, but then also about quality score in Google AdWords. Uh, very, very good information. Um, some of the most in-depth AdWords information I've seen. Uh, so yeah, good, great. Yeah, hopefully that's useful. And uh, so I just switched to a different uh, headset here. So hopefully this that sounds that sounds actually much better. So uh, thank okay. you, Frederick. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, let's let's try that. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I'm doing nowadays is uh, I, I built a company called Optimizer, and really we're building tools to improve the return on investment that you get from search marketing and AdWords specifically. And it was kind of strange because after leaving Google, um, after having been there for ten years, I really thought that there would be all these great tools for advertisers to optimize their accounts and get great reporting. And once I started looking, I, I really wasn't happy with what was out there. So I decided to build my own company. We started that last June. Um, and really, we do two things. We help you automate account management. So we do optimizations based on data that we see in your accounts. And we give you access to unique big data insights. Um, and so the little image that you see there, that's one of our geo visualizations, where we overlay all of your data from AdWords on a map. And so that's something you could do in analytics, but we make it really, really easy to do through our tools as well. Um, you know, here's a slide of a couple of the things that we do at Optimizer, but I don't want to spend too much time on that because I know we're all here to talk about quality score. So anyway, the agenda for quality score, and we'll go through each of these sections, and then McKay is going to uh, see if there's any questions at the end of each section so that we don't leave people hanging. But basically, we want to talk about what is quality score, how is it calculated by Google, how can you measure it, and then if you're measuring it, how can you improve it? So um, first things first, why does Google even have a quality score? Well, if you think back to the days before Google AdWords and the state of online advertising, it was in shambles, right? You had banner blindness, you had punch the monkey ads, you had ads everywhere on the internet, but none of these ads were relevant. They were always interrupting what you were doing, and and so there was a big problem in the industry. Nobody was clicking on the ads, nobody was interacting with them, so the prices for these ads were going down, publishers weren't making a lot of money anymore, and users of the internet were just having a lousy experience because they were seeing ads that made no sense to them. And so what Google said was there's got to be a better way. There's got to be some sort of a metric that we can introduce into the ecosystem that's going to align the incentives of the three parties, the users, the advertisers, and Google. Um, and Google, that could also be other publishers, right? So other websites that show ads. 
But basically what they said was if we can show more useful ads, an ad that actually answers a user's question, then the user will be happy and they will be more likely to click on it. And if they click on it because they're really interested, then it usually means that the advertiser has a chance to get a new customer, to get a new lead. And if more of these people are clicking, then Google also makes more money because they can sell these ads for more money. Right? And so by introducing the quality score factor into the system, Google was able to align these incentives. Now, when Google looked at well, how do we put a quality score metric into AdWords, Google didn't want to be the police of the internet. So Google didn't want to say, okay, you advertiser A, we're going to give you a great quality score, and you advertiser B, we're going to give you a lousy quality score. Um, and, and sort of the, the reason Google can't do that, I mean, first of all, it doesn't want to be the police of the internet, but also it, it's really hard, right, for humans to make judgments about which keywords are super relevant and which ones are less relevant is actually quite difficult. And the reason for that is that, you know, when I first joined Google, one of my jobs was to review the new ads being submitted into the system. And so I could very easily look at, is the ad grammatically correct? Is it not making um, unreasonable claims? But if it was a plumber submitting an ad and the keyword was some sort of very specific widget that is really common in plumbing industry, I don't know plumbing, right? So for me as a human to make a judgment and say this is a good keyword or this is a not a good keyword, that, that wouldn't have made sense because I'm not an expert in all of these different industries that people are advertising on Google. So what Google said, instead of having our people make these judgments, why don't we look at what happens when we put an ad on the web? And we'll see how many people um, that we show an ad to actually click on the ad. And that click-through rate, so the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions, that's going to be our measure of how relevant an ad is. And so that eventually became quality score. So it, it's the wisdom of the crowds is helping Google decide which ads are useful to its users. And so this whole quality score, the, the reason people want to talk about this, the reason people want to know about it, is that it influences quite a few things that are really near and dear advertisers' hearts. First of all, there's eligibility. And so eligibility just means, are, is your ad eligible to show up on the Google search results page? So if a user does a search for a specific query, does your keyword, is it good enough to be able to show on that page? And again, it's because Google says, we want to have an ad that's relevant that users are going to connect with. So if you are selling a Ford F-150 pickup truck, you cannot just go and buy the keyword NFL football. Right, because that's not relevant. That's not what the user was searching for. If a user goes to Google and they type in NFL football, they're looking for scores. They're looking for player names. They're looking for fantasy football. Right? They're not looking to buy a pickup truck. And yes, that may be your target market, but that's not the way search works. On search, you want to answer the question that the user has. And so if your keyword is not relevant enough, Google's simply going to say, well, you're not eligible to show up for this specific keyword. And then the next thing they do is they say, what is the position of the ads? Uh, so obviously, you're not the only one advertising for a certain keyword. And so what Google has to do is they have to look through the system and they have to figure out how do these hundreds of advertisers who want to show up on this search results page, which one gets the highest position. And quality score is one of the main factors in that. There's really only two factors. There's maximum cost per click, so how much you're willing to spend, as well as the quality score. And these two factors are pretty much equal. So if you have a higher quality score, you're going to get a higher position on the Google search results page. And then in the past couple of years, Google has really been introducing a lot of ad extensions. And, and these are a little enhancements to the ads. So the ads in the beginning, they used to be three lines of text and a display URL, and that was it. But nowadays, you see ads that have additional links, like side links. You might see ads that have a phone number. Um, you might see ads that have a review from some other place on the internet. And so these are called ad extensions. And whether these ad extensions are able to show up next to your ad is in part determined by your quality score. Um, and so if you don't have a high enough quality score, Google might straight up say, we're not going to show any extensions because you haven't proven to us yet that your ad is of high quality, of high relevance. Now, the next one on there is price. Right? I said how price and quality score, those are both factors in positioning. Um, so because they're both factors, what it means is if, if you increase your quality score, the price that you need to pay to maintain that same position on the page actually goes down. So a uh, little known fact, the top ad on Google sometimes pays less money than the second ad on Google. That, that, that's pretty amazing, right? And the way that they do that is by having a higher quality score, by having higher relevance. 
Um, top slot, that's the next one. So Google says we want advertising to be just as useful, if not more useful, than organic results. So if there's not an ad that is better than an organic result, we're simply not going to show these ads at the top of the page because that would be a distraction to users. So only if the ads have a high enough quality score are they going to be eligible to show up above the search results. And obviously that's a very desirable position because once you go to the top of the page, you could see a click-through rate of 30%. Whereas on the right-hand side, maybe you'll see a click-through rate of 5%. Right? So it's a 6x improvement in how many clicks you might see from, uh, from the same searches being done. And then the final one on there is a DKI. That stands for Dynamic Keyword Insertion. And that's a feature where Google will automatically insert your keyword into the ad text. But that is only available if you have a high enough quality score. Um, so all of these things obviously explain why we're talking about quality score. But I think here, here's the best illustration. And this is a chart that we have in our tool. And it shows you historical quality score. And that blue line shows that the quality score at a certain point um, goes up and down a bit. And then it actually drops. Right. So the blue line goes from a higher level to a lower level. And you can see that a couple of days after that happens, the average cost per click goes up for that account. Uh, and so th this is the easiest way to illustrate that if you have a worse quality score, the amount of money that you need to pay to show up on that page is going to go up. Um, and so that's why we're talking about this, right? If you can save money in your advertising by improving your quality score, you're going to be a pretty happy advertiser, I think. So um, how does all of this ranking work? How does Google rank? Well, up until uh, probably one or two months ago, it was quality score multiplied by maximum CPC and that gave you your ad rank. Actually, this is the system that was in place over a year ago. Recently, Google said it's going to be quality score as a factor and maximum CPC as a factor, but it's no longer a straight up multiple that are complicated. I'm happy to discuss those with anyone uh, sort of one-on-one, -on -one, but, um, but basically it's quality score and maximum CPC were the two factors in ad rank. Now, Google changed it about a month ago and they said, we're also going to start looking at ad extensions for ad ranking. So now there are three factors. But again, quality score is one of these factors. So if you understand quality score, you're able to improve your quality score. You're going to be able to improve your rank for your ad. If you get a higher position on the page, you'll get more clicks. You'll pay less money for it. of quality score that Google has. There's one quality score for ads that appear on the search results page. There's a different one for ads that appear on the content network. So Google has this huge display network where you can show banner ads. You can show ads on, on sites like AOL. Um, and, and that has a different quality score, obviously, than what shows up on Google. And now with mobile being on the rise and so many people doing searches on mobile devices and so many ads showing up on mobile devices, Google has a separate quality score for that as well. Um, so just keep in mind that depending on which devices you're targeting, which networks you're targeting, you are going to have different quality scores in the system. Each one of those is separately calculated by Google. Now, uh, what goes into this quality score? Well, first of all, the quality score that you see in your account next to your keyword is a number of 1 to 10. But you have to keep in mind that that number, that's simply an approximation. It's kind of a guideline that Google gives you to, to tell you how relevant they believe your ad to be. The actual scores are going to be unique for each query. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is with these numbers 1 to 10 that Google gives you, again, that's just um, that's kind of like a little dashboard, right? So it doesn't mean that if you go from a quality score of 2 to a quality score of 4, that, you've, um, that you're going to decrease your cost per click in half. It's not because you doubled your quality score on the 1 to 10 chart that you're going to drop your cost in half. Now, with the actual quality score, the one behind the scenes, the one that Google doesn't tell you, that's exactly what happens. But just keep in mind that the 1 to 10, that's an approximation. That's the guideline Google gives you. Now, what goes into this quality score is really three big factors. Uh, the first one is click-through rate. The second one is relevancy. And the third one is landing page. And I'm going to talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail now. So the first factor that Google looks at for determining quality score is click-through rate. 
Um, and if you look back historically, this, this makes sense, right? In the beginning, it was that whole wisdom of the crowd. So Google would look at what is the click-through rate, and click-through rate is simply the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions for an ad. And we're going to use that as a gauge of how relevant an ad is. Now, Google started looking at that click-through rate in many different ways. And so when they started getting a little bit more sophisticated and maybe doing some predictive modeling on this, they said, we can't just call it click-through rate anymore, so we have to call it quality score. But quality score is really just an evolution of click-through rate, if you will. And so what that means is that click-through rate is really your largest factor that goes into quality score, because that's what it was before it started morphing a little bit. Now, the question people often ask is, if I am a new advertiser and I put in a keyword in a brand new account, how does Google know any sort of quality score if it's mostly based on click-through rate? Well, here's what Google does. Google can look at click-through rate in many different ways. And what they do is they look at the keyword that you're submitting and they look across all of Google and other advertisers who who bought that keyword. And based on that, they have a baseline understanding of what the click-through rate expectation would be. And so that will be your starting quality score is based on that historical system-wide number. Now, as your account starts building up some, uh, some data of its own, Google starts to understand your account level quality score. And that's just a measure that says, are you typically a good advertiser, a bad advertiser, or an average advertiser? And so the next time you add a new keyword, Google says, okay, this is the baseline for that keyword based on system-wide data. But because we know that your account level quality score is better than average, you typically seem to know what you're doing and you typically submit really good keywords, we're going to boost up that system-wide average and we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you're going to be better on this keyword than everyone else because that's what you've shown us to do in the past. So that's why the account level quality score is really important. Now, of course, when you put in a new keyword, you put in your own creative, so your own ad text with a URL. And as soon as you start getting enough data between the keyword and the creative plus URL, that's what Google uses because that's the most specific information they have about how that keyword in your account performs for that specific ad text. And so all of the system-wide data, they stop looking at that as soon as they have enough data to know how you perform with your ad text on that keyword. Now, the, the important thing to notice here is, now for those of you who already have an AdWords account, is I'm not talking about campaigns here. I'm not talking about ad groups. I'm just talking about the relationship between a keyword and an ad text. And that's what's important. And really, one thing that comes out of this is if you want to take a keyword and an ad text and move it to a different campaign, or you want to put it in a different ad group, that's completely fine because Google doesn't look at the ad group ID. They don't look at the campaign ID. They don't look at those structural elements. They just look at what is the relationship between the keyword and the ad text. And so if you move that exact combination to a different location in the account, that is going to carry over. And Google's just going to continue off uh, from where you left off before. And it could take about an hour or two before Google gives you that correct number before that gets transferred over to the new location. But that happens very, very quickly because Google is able to look at the footprint of the keyword with the ad text. So the, the other thing to, to mention really quickly here is that Google looks at the exact match click-through rate. What that means is they look at the data, the click-through rate data, when the query, so the search that the user did, when that matches exactly to the keyword that you have. Um, so in this example, in this table, say that you had bought the keyword blue widgets, and you had bought it as a, a broad match keyword. Well, if a user goes and does a search for blue widgets, which is exactly the same like your broad match keyword, then that impacts your quality score number. That's when the CTR that happens, that's going to be counted towards your quality score. Now, on the other hand, when somebody searches for buy blue widgets or blue widgets for free, because there's additional words in these queries, Google doesn't use that to modify the number 1 to 10 that you see in the account. So it doesn't modify that quality score number. However, there is a real-time quality score component, which I'll talk about next, and that is influenced. So now Google will know, okay, if somebody adds the word buy to the keyword or they put in the, the word free, how does that change your click-through rate expectation? Does it make it better or does it make it worse? And based on that, the next time they see those same words in the query, they're going to know better uh, how your ad is likely to perform. So kind of a takeaway here is that quality score is going to be the same regardless of the match type that you're using. So the only reason to use match types is to better target your ads and to set better bids. Don't just use different match types because you think it's going to give you a different quality score. 
Now, the second big component of quality score is relevancy. Um, and relevancy, that was always sort of the mystery factor, right? That's where all the hand-waving starts to happen uh, in advertisers' minds. But really, relevancy, what it means is Google is able to look at click-through rate, but they're able to look at it in a real-time fashion. So they're able to look at what is the specific situation when this search is happening. So for example, what time of day is the search happening? What day of the week is it happening? Um, is it coming on a mobile device, on a desktop device? Uh, what's the city that the user is searching from? All of these little signals, Google is able to take into account and factor it in. And that gives you a real-time quality score that's a little bit more precise than the one that's, uh, that's kind of g generic 1 to 10 that you see in the account. So what's possible that could happen is that you have a, a keyword that has a low quality score, you know, maybe has a quality score of 5, and you still get your ad showing up in certain cases. And, and maybe that's because Google knows that even though it's generally not a very good keyword, in specific situations for people in specific cities, specific times of day, it actually performs really well. And so based on that, they give you a real-time quality score, and that's really what your relevancy factor is all about. And so here's another example of what that relevancy means. It, it simply means that if you have three advertisers, uh, the first one on the left in the gray is a Java Indonesia Island, so they, they're buying the keyword Java uh, in the context of travel. And the second one in the blue is buying Java in the context of coffee. And the third one is an advertiser buying the keyword Java, and they're talking about programming languages. And so if a search happens for a cup of Java best place for coffee, Google is able to take those signals from that specific search, and they're able to say, well, even though all three of these advertisers are buying the keyword Java, it's really only that middle one that makes a lot of sense because they're talking about Java coffee and not the other types of Java that people might be searching for. And so that helps Google show better ads, more relevant ads that users like better. And then finally, there's the, the landing page component. And so this is really a small part of quality score. Um, I see too many people who look at their improving their landing page because they want to boost their uh, quality score. And oftentimes, if you don't have a bad landing page, you're not going to get that much gain in terms of quality score. Now, uh, that's not to say that improving your landing page is not important. It's actually really important. If you can take your landing page and make it better and go from a 5% to a 10% conversion rate, I mean, obviously, that's huge, right, regardless of whether you improve your quality score. Uh, but, but I do see a lot of people who kind of stress out about their landing page quality when that, in fact, is not really a huge factor of what Google looks at for quality score. And then uh, ad extensions, this is sort of the fourth thing, which is not officially part of quality score the way Google describes it, but it is part of the ad ranking. So, so it's, it's kind of interchangeable in my mind, and I think it is something you need to pay attention to to some degree. Uh, but when Google introduced that ad extensions were becoming part of how the ads would rank, I think some people freaked out a little bit. They said, oh, does that mean I need to be running every single ad extension that Google offers? And, and that's not what it's about. Google is simply saying, if an advertiser puts ad extensions, and like you can see that example, right? So the first one is using site links, and they're using uh, the extension to generate leads. So that is obviously driving a lot more engagement with that ad. It's, it's increasing the click-through rate for that ad. And click-through rate, remember, is one of the biggest components of quality score. So Google is, is straight up saying, if you, as an advertiser, you put in ad extensions that give a better click-through rate, then you should be rewarded for that in terms of a better position on the page. And that's all it means. Now, um, if you are an online advertiser, it doesn't make sense to have a location extension because you don't want people to come to your headquarters when you, know, you sell all your stuff online. Um, so, but that's OK, right? because that, that's not relevant. That's not going to increase the engagement with your ad. We just have to think about which ad extensions would be useful for my specific situation. OK, so um, finally, I'm going to go into measuring and improving quality score, but take a quick break again to see if anyone has questions. Frederick, uh, there's a couple questions that people are asking. The first is, can you give us a sense of the number, the way the number, the quality score system works? I mean, is five good, three? I mean, what, how does the number system work? And then the second question is the scoring system itself. And then the second question is related to landing pages. I think that's maybe surprising to some people who spend 36 hours tweaking their landing pages to find out that it actually doesn't impact quality score, score that dramatically. Can you address both of those issues before moving on? Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll talk about what is a good number, what's a bad number, 
um, in just a few slides, so I'll, I'll save that one. But as far as the landing page quality, so I think it helps to have the backstory on this. So what we were seeing at Google was that um, people were advertisers were gaming the system. And if I tell you click-through rate is the main factor of quality score, well, guess what? All of us as advertisers, we know how to get a better click-through rate. And basically what we could do is we could say, click my ad, get a free iPod. And clicks are going to go through the roof. Now, when the user clicks on the ad and they come to your site and they find out that you're not actually going to give them the free iPod and that that was just your way to improve your click-through rate and improve your quality score, it's a bad experience. And so Google started looking at these situations where you know, there, there were kind of scammy advertisers promising things they couldn't deliver. They were taking people's private information and reselling it. Um, they were putting up pages with the only purpose was for someone to click on an ad. These were called made for AdSense type pages, MFA. Um, and so there were all these bad experiences where, you know, Google wasn't able to, to measure the real user experience by just looking at the ad clicks. They had to start looking at what happened after the ad click. And so really when landing page quality came about, it, it was to go after really poor experiences. Now the, the reason that I show the slide actually here, which has eBay and Amazon, uh, and I should have said this, but, but, but what I'm trying to illustrate is the fact that these are two e-commerce websites. These are both great websites. They have a completely different approach to how the page is laid out, to the business model, but at the end of the day, these are good landing pages, right? These are getting users to what they want to do. Um, and so making tweaks to either one of these pages is, is not really going to make that big of a difference in Google's mind as far as quality score. Right? So long as you're giving people something that's a good experience where they can find the product or the service they were looking for, uh, that's fine. But don't worry too much about your color schemes, your page layout. Uh, worry about giving users the information they were looking for. Now, um, if the, the other way, and I will get to that a little bit later, if you find that landing page quality is an issue, Google will actually tell you that. That's when I would focus on it, because that's when it can be really detrimental to your quality score. If Google says your quality score, a landing page quality component is fine, then I wouldn't really focus on it. And, and again, hopefully these folks who spent 36 hours improving these landing pages, they, they got some more uh, conversion rate out of it. Right? And I know you guys have done webinars about landing page optimization. And again, that's, that's a good thing to do, but understand why you're doing it. Don't do it for the sake of quality score. Do it for the sake of improving your conversion rate because you know, if you double your conversion rate on your page, guess what? Now you can bid twice as much for a click from Google. And you can leave your competitors in the dust by, uh, by doing that work. Um, so it, it, it's useful in many ways, just not some of the ways that people, I, I think, mistakenly sometimes believe. Um, so, but yeah, let me... Uh, I'll get yeah. through a few more slides here and then we'll talk about exactly uh, which numbers are good. So uh, the first thing is how do you see your quality score in your account? Well, the, these are listed at the keyword level. So you go to your keyword page, you click on the columns link that's over there by number one. And then you click on attributes and then you make sure your quality score column is added. Once you add that, you will see them next to each of the keywords in your account. Um, now, a quality score of 1 is really, really bad. A quality score of 10 is really, really good. And I would say anything from a 7 and above, that's a good quality score. Anything below that, you probably have some room for optimization. Uh, the other point is that if you have a quality score of 1, or you have two keywords, one has a quality score of 1 and the other has a quality score of 4, any improvements you make to the quality score of one is going to have a bigger financial impact to you than improving the one with a quality score of four. So kind of the further down or the closer you are to one, the bigger of a financial impact it is because you know, at a quality score of one, Google really does not like your ad and you have to pay through the nose to, to really get any sort of ranking on that page. Um, whereas if you go from a quality score of a seven to an eight, that's, that, that's to Google is a good ad, just made a little bit better, so the financial impact is not going to be quite as significant. Now, I mentioned that for a landing page quality, you could actually look at the subcomponents of uh, quality scores. So what you do is next to each of these keywords, there's a little speech bubble. If you hover over that, it'll tell you your quality score number as well as the three different subcomponents that I explained before. And now if you see a landing page experience, if that is below average, now you know you might want to go and do some work to your landing pages. And so first step is probably make sure you're using uh, your deep linking into your site. You're not just taking people to the home page. And that, that's obvious, right? I mean, people just did a search on Google. 
take them to the page on your site that has that product or service. Don't make them do a search again because it's easier for the user to click back to Google and click on the next ad that's actually doing this and taking them to the right page than to go and search your site to find the thing they were looking for. Um, so that'd be step one. If that doesn't solve it, then go ahead and you know do some of the landing page quality, landing page optimization techniques that I know have been covered in other webinars that you guys have hosted. Um, so that's how you see the subcomponents of quality score. Now, I also mentioned there's this whole account quality score component that really helps you when you're setting up new keywords for the first time uh, or when it's a brand new account. Um, there is a way to calculate that. It, it's pretty complicated. It requires downloading a bunch of reports, doing um, an impression weighted average, which include, involves some pivot tables in Excel. Um, and so I, I've done this for accounts. I mean, they're big accounts. It sometimes takes me four hours to get this number. Um, so obviously, that's not something I want to be doing on a daily basis. Uh, the good news is Optimizer has taken that process and automated it. So do take a look at that. The other problem that we're trying to solve at Optimizer is that Google treats quality score as an attribute, not a metric. And what that means is simply that Google will tell you your quality score at this moment in time. But if you want to look back at last week or a month ago, they're not going to tell you what your quality score was back then. So you kind of have no clue if your quality score is improving or decreasing. And that's a problem, right? Because you're working in your accounts and, and you make changes. You want to understand, are these changes a net positive in Google's mind, or are they actually hurting my quality score? Um, and so solutions to that, you can either download your keyword reports daily. So you can always then go back to an older report and look up what your quality score was. Uh, you can use an AdWords script to automatically download it to some spreadsheet, or you can use a tool, and again, Optimizer will do this for you. Um, and, and here's a, another indication that we have. So this is in the Optimizer tool. will tell you what your account quality score is. Um, and so this is an impression weighted average uh, just for desktop clicks. And, uh, and we'll even show you this distribution, and this is where it's interesting, right? So quality score 10 keywords, you have a lot of these, and these are awesome. And then in blue, you have great keywords between a seven and a nine. And then anything between a four and a six, that's okay. You know, that could use improvement, but it's not horrible. And then anything below a three or uh, below a four, so that is a really poor quality score. And then what we do is we also show you which ad groups you should optimize. So basically looking at the highest cost ad groups that you have that have a lower than average quality score, that is your best place to start optimizing to start saving yourself some money. Um, and then again, here's another illustration from our tool, but it shows that if you're able to make your click-through rates increase, right? I'm not sure what you've done here, but you know, on, on this day, you can look back and you can see the changes that you made. Your click-through rate really jumped up, and a few days later, Google takes notice, and your quality score is starting to increase again. Um, and so hopefully it continues to increase beyond that point. Um, so, what do you do for optimization, right? I mean, that's sort of the big question, that, that we understand what quality score is, how it works, how do we make it better? Uh, well, really, the, the first thing is create tightly themed ad groups. Um, and think back to the slide where I showed you that it was the relationship between the keyword and the ad text and the CTR between those two that is one of the main components of quality score. Well, that just says make sure that for every single keyword you have, you have a really good ad text. And the way to have a good ad text is to have small little ad groups where you're not putting a very diverse group of keywords, but you're keeping them very consistently around a certain theme. And then you have ad texts related to those keywords. Use multiple ad texts in each ad group. Uh, the, the, the beauty about Google AdWords is that they will take a whole bunch of your ad texts and they will automatically figure out which one has the best click-through rate, which one seems to be resonating the most with consumers. And the crazy thing is that, you know, um, me as a marketing expert, all of you as experts in marketing and the experts in your businesses, you're probably still going to get it wrong as far as what's going to resonate with consumers. Um, I mean, I love doing this little example, but, uh, but you go to any conference and you show people two different ads with a keyword, and you ask them which one do you think is going to perform better. Um, and actually, if you ask it in a big enough audience, you typically do get it right because it's representative of the whole population. But you ask any individual person, I mean, chances are they're going to get it wrong. Um, and so I was just making the point, let Google use its statistical methods to figure out which is the best ad text. Don't try to guess at it yourself. Um, and use all of the ad extensions that make sense. Right? So if you have a local business that you're advertising for, 
um, you know, which is often the type of businesses that will have phone calls uh, and use a product like Log My Calls. If you're doing that, make sure you're using the local extension because that makes sense. That gives the user more information about where your business is based, what your phone number is, um, and all of those things that people would want to see about a local business. Now, next thing is make a compelling call to action in uh, This 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 was probably discussed in the landing page webinars, but basically it's saying if you tell the user what you want them to do when they come to your site, chances are better they will actually go and do it. Um, and humans, by nature, uh, they like hunting, right? They, they're kind of hunters. They have to go looking for food. Every time we go to the supermarket, we're basically hunting for our food. We're looking for stuff. We like to look for stuff. If you tell us what we're looking for, it's almost like an old game. People enjoy it. They go and do uh, they, 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 you give them a mission, they go on that mission. And so uh, the, the other way to explain this is if you tell users in your ad, uh, come to our site and request a free uh, consultation or come to our site and call us, you're telling that user what they're looking for in your page. So rather than coming to your page and then being like, hmm, what do I do next, they know what you want them to do, they know what they can do, and it's more likely they'll actually find that action and complete it. Uh, the next one is fix keywords with lots of impressions and a low click-through rate. And so this is just to preserve your account quality score. If you have keywords that get tons of impressions and they have low click-through rates and low quality scores, that is hurting your ability to put up new ads in the future. Google's just going to think you're a lousy advertiser, and the next time you add new keywords, no matter how good those are, you're going to be facing an uphill battle where you have to spend a lot more money up front to prove to Google that you've cleaned up your act and you actually have really good click-through rate ads now. Um, in terms of what is a low CTR, a high CTR, again, that runs the, the spectrum, right? It could be 30% on the high end, 2% on the low end. Uh, but take a look at the quality score number because that's going to indicate if your quality score, if your CTR is good or bad. And then a kind of a corollary to this is fixed keywords with very few impressions and a low CTR. The reason I say this is that you do have a long tail effect. So you might have thousands of keywords that each get two, three impressions per month, and they all have a lousy quality score. But you total up those thousands of small keywords, and that actually could be a significant portion of the impressions to your account. And so individually, they may not look that horrible, but you put them all together, and they're actually, again, dragging down your account level quality score. And then the next one is, uh, you know, we're talking about quality score here in this session, but at the end of the day, quality score is a metric that Google has to help you do optimization. It is not a business metric for you. It, it, I have yet to meet a company whose business goal it is to have better quality score. The businesses have goals like hit a certain return on investment, a certain return on ad spend, certain profitability levels, right? I've seen keywords that have a quality score of a two and they're the most profitable keyword for a business. And so keep that keyword. Don't get rid of it. It's making you money. Now, of course, if you could take that keyword, get it from a two quality score to a four quality score, you'd save a lot of money on that. You'd still make a profit and you'd spend less money to get that profit. But, you know, don't stress about it that much, right? I mean, if it's working and it has a lousy quality score, that's just a Google metric. It's not a metric that really impacts your business uh, and, and the KPIs that you might look at. And then finally, use search query reports to really discover what users might be looking for. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. Um, so I've just got a few more slides here, but uh, basically the ideal ad group that I recommend is somewhere between 5 to 30 closely related keywords. And do not use different match types just for the sake of having different match types. If you want to use different match types, so you can set different bids um, and maybe have different, um, or you can have different match types in different ad groups with different ad tags, that's fine. But I see some people just make uh, different um, match types with no specific purpose. And then as far as the ads go, use at least two ad texts. Use the keyword in the ad text. Um, that's so that you preserve the scent of the query is what they call it. And basically what you want to do is you want to take the keywords that the user types into the search box, make sure those same words appear in your ad, uh, usually preferably the headline, and that those same words then again appear on the landing page where you take them to. That way you're preserving the scent of the query, and the user um, is very reassured that the ad they see, the landing page they clicked on, is helping them answer the question that they just asked Google. If, if, if they lose the scent of the query, chances are they'll go back and look for a different advertiser. Uh, and, and again, the users who search on Google, they're looking for information. They're not looking for gimmicks. So give people information about why your company is a great one to do business with. Uh, don't try to get too fancy. That often doesn't work that well, we find. 
and then in all you do, be patient, right? Uh, give Google at least 100 impressions to let your quality score settle in. Kind of a, on a time frame basis, usually it takes no more than two weeks for Google to settle in on the quality score that you should have. So once you add a new keyword, it can take up to two weeks. And that, that's for lower volume stuff. If you have a really high volume keyword, high impression volume keyword, that quality score should be correct in about a day or two at the most. Um, respond to bad quality score by optimizing or deleting poor quality score keywords. And then experiment. So you know, feel free to make changes that you think will improve your click-through rate and your quality score. Because if it doesn't work out the way you were hoping it would, you can always go back. You can always revert. Um, and that's because Google maintains that quality score between the keyword and the ad text. And so if you make a new ad text and your quality score changes and you're, and you're not happy with it, you can reinstate the old ad text and Google will remember what the quality score for that one was. So you're not going to be starting from zero. You're going to be starting from very close to where you left off. And then you can use broad match keywords to discover new query variations. Um, and so this is the search terms report, where Google tells you what the user actually typed into the search box when they did a search. So they, it may not be exactly the same as your keyword, but now you'll get a good sense of what are some good new keywords to add to my account. And if you take these good keywords that have had conversions and you add them to your account, you're probably going to be boosting your account level quality score. Um, if nothing else, these keywords, by adding them to your account, are going to get higher positions because Google's now certain that you want to show for these, uh, whereas if it was coming off of a broad match, they kind of have to guess. So they have to guess that maybe that's something that's relevant to you. Whereas if you say, this is a keyword I want to advertise on, that uncertainty from Google's perspective is gone and your position is going to be better. And then anything that's not relevant to your business, obviously you want to delete those and put them in as negative keywords. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, come to terms with quality score. And even if you've done everything right, uh, I've seen accounts where quality score just gets stuck in a low place. And that's OK because it's, it's that way because we're trying to hit a certain return on investment. Um, and doing some things that would get us more clicks and higher quality score may actually be detrimental to the the, the business metrics for that company. So come to terms with the quality score that you have. Oops, I went the wrong way here. Um, and so those are all the slides I have. And uh, Mikhail, I'd love to take some questions in the last 10 minutes here. Great. We got a few. That was awesome, by the way. Um, great information. So let's, let's go through a few questions. Um, so Craig asks, he says, you know, my, my campaigns are pretty low frequency. They're also low traffic. He's in a niche industry. And so each of his ads maybe gets two to three clicks a day, but he has a ton of keywords with low impressions. How does Google take that into account with quality score uh, and into their into their algorithms? Do they look at in specific industries and and uh, you know very few impressions over a large number of keywords? Yeah. So if you have very low impressions, that's not really a big deal to Google, right? Um, what Google is looking for is once you do get those impressions, do people click on the ads? And so it's a little bit tricky, of course, in that situation because you have to take a look at a longer date range for your business to get some statistically significant data. Uh, but you know, maybe take a look over the last 30 days, the last 60 days, and take a look at what is your click-through rate when those few impressions did happen. Um, look at that individually for the keywords, but also aggregate it up to the account level. So, uh, and again, I would say anything below a 2% click-through rate that's, regardless of what your quality score number says, that's something you probably want to take a look at. You should be able to get better than a 2% click-through rate if you have a really good ad. Um, I just started up a new campaign for one of my customers last week, and uh, you know I made five different ad texts. All of those got 100 impressions, zero clicks. And then I made the sixth variation, and all of a sudden, we got a, a really good click-through rate. And so just changing a few words, a little bit of the messaging, that uh, that really made that come together. Um, so, so so that's one thing you can certainly take a look at is make sure you have those great ad texts and uh, and roll up your data so you're looking at enough impressions to be statistically significant. But there is no penalty just for having low impression keywords. Google does not care at all if you have that. Great. Um, and then David asks, he says, is there any harm in using different match types for the same keyword? Does that harm quality score in any way? No, so Dave, that doesn't harm quality score at all. Um, but it also doesn't really benefit it, right? So I see some people just complicating their account structure because they think that adding an exact match keyword is going to make it better. And, and that's a little bit that we've always had a problem with the terminology. So 
uh, we tell people, or Google tells people that the quality score is based off of exact match data. And that does not mean you have to have the exact match keyword in the account to get the best quality score. It just means that the search that the user does has to be exactly the same as your keyword, but that's regardless of match type. So if you have a broad match keyword, but it's exactly the same as what the user searched for, Google considers that an exact match. Um, so the, the reason, though, that you would want to use different match types is to get your bidding under control and your performance. So obviously, if you run on a broad match keyword, you're going to get shown for a lot of different things. And some of those may be really useless, and some of those may, may be really good ones. And so that's why you have to have that strategy of looking at your search terms report and go through that and find out what is good and what is bad. And then always be evolving your account by adding more of the good keywords and adding negatives from the things that don't work. Um, and then obviously the bids as well, right? So you might find that an exact match keyword performs really well, so maybe you put a higher maximum cost per click on that one than on the same keyword in a broad match. So that's why you would want to have these different match types so that you can set different bids to make sure you're hitting your uh, cost per acquisition goals, for example. Great. The next question is about extensions, ad extensions. Um, somebody says, uh, I have a local business. Um, what's the best method for them to contact me? Is the phone number the best ad extension? Let me take that if I can, Frederick, and then I'll, I'll defer to you. Sure. Um, as a company that provides call analytics, we, we you know calls are great. Um, and the thing that is great about the way AdWords works is you can easily add any number. So this can be a local number or a toll-free number you get from Log My Calls as a call extension. And then you can get metrics from us about not only, of course, Google will give you data about how many times that number was, was clicked or tapped, but you can actually get other data from Log My Calls about what happened on the call, the quality of the call or the lead, uh, whether or not they bought, whether or not they set an appointment, all that stuff. So really high level, or excuse me, high quality metrics in the weeds metrics uh, that will be able to, uh, you can analyze your ROI in a significantly more granular way. So if you're a local business or if you're a national business that has a local presence, I personally recommend call extensions. Uh, Frederick, anything to add on that? Yeah, exactly. The call extension and then the local extension, right? So make sure you have your business listed on Google Plus in their places yeah. section. Um, and then connect that up to your AdWords account because then that way Google can show your address next to it. They can show it on a map. Um, and, and basically, any extension that you think has any sort of relevance to your business, um, site links, for example, that's relevant to everyone, no matter if you're a small local, big national, online only, um, brick and mortar, anyone can use site links because this gives you the opportunity to direct people to four more different places on your website. Um, and so give Google as much information as you can through all of these different extensions. And then Google is actually going to figure out which of the extensions make most sense in each specific search. Um, and so you don't have to worry about it, right? You just tell Google, here's all my information. You guys go and figure out how to get me the most potential clicks, calls, or whatever it is that you're after. That's great. So it's, that's one thing they've done an incredible job of, is making sure that it's as hands-off as it can possibly be for the advertiser. Um, good question from Matt here. He says, does pausing a low-quality score help the overall quality of score of the account, or does the low-quality score ad need to actually be deleted versus pause? It's kind of an interesting question. It's an interesting question. And so the, the answer to that specific question is pausing is fine. The Google basically looks at clicks divided by impressions. That's your CTR. So the moment that you take a low quality score keyword out of the mix and you prevent it from getting more impressions, your quality score should start rising. Now, I'm not saying that the moment that you pause it, all of a sudden your account level quality score is going to be better because you have done some damage by having low click-through rates in the past. Um, it's just going forward from the moment that you pause that keyword, your CTRs will be better, your quality score should be better. Now, if you have a keyword that you do not really intend to ever run on again, I do recommend you delete it. And, and that's for the reason that policies do change at Google in terms of what keywords they allow and which ones they don't. And I've seen some unfortunate situations where, uh, you know, five years after having paused a keyword, all of a sudden the account gets shut down because it's violating some policy that the advertiser didn't even remember as it was five years ago they ran on that keyword. Policy changed. Google said, oh, this is paused, so maybe they want to run on it at some point again. 
Um, so in those cases, deleting would have been uh, just generally the safer approach for the whole account. But, that, but that's kind of separate from quality score. It's more of a policy thing. Okay, and then uh, second to last question. Uh, so Craig asked a question about the Google Display Network. He says, is there some sort of quality score element there? Obviously, it's not the same with keywords and everything, but I mean, my assumption would be they have an algorithm that determines quality score in some way. Am I wrong there? What's, what's the deal with Display Network? Yeah, Craig, that's, uh, that's exactly right. They have a different algorithm, and it's a little bit more complicated, like you suggested, because it's not just what is the keyword, but it's what is the relationship of the grouping of keywords and the concept that those keywords define, and then the kind of the, con the contextual uh, content of the page that it's showing on. Um, on the display network, oftentimes you might be showing up on thousands of different websites, thousands of different pages. And so Google has to do some aggregation to figure out, okay, even though you've only had five impressions on this particular page, that page contextually is very close to a different page. And so now they can start adding up these stats and they can get to statistical significance much more quickly. Um, it's a complex way of calculating it, but it's, it's you know, fundamentally still looking at what is the click-through rate. Now, um, let me take a minute and go into a little bit more depth here, if I may. And so basically what Google is looking at is how can they best monetize uh, some of these pages. So when it comes to a page on the display network, some advertisers bid on a cost per impression basis, others bid on a cost per click basis. And so what Google is doing is they're comparing the cost per click advertisers against the cost per impression advertisers, and they do it by multiplying the cost per click times um, times the click-through rate. That gives you the same as that's the same as cost per impression. And so, uh, for that reason, again, Google is looking really strongly at the CTR, but they have to guess at that CTR, and that's where they use that aggregation to to kind of get an estimate of what CTR could be expected for a certain grouping of keywords to a certain type of page. Great. And then the last question, tell us a little bit about Optimizer, how people can engage with you guys, all the services you offer, um, because I think, uh, I think that will be interesting to the, uh, to the audience. Yeah, great. No, and I love doing a little sales pitch for my company here. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, when I left Google, I was managing some accounts, and I found that it was too inefficient. It was taking me too much time to do some repetitive tasks. And we simply identified was it what is it that good optimizers do in an account? How do they pull the data? What kind of decisions do they make from that data? And we automated it. So we have one-click optimizations where something that would have taken you two hours of building an Excel spreadsheet in the past, we'll do it in 30 seconds, and we'll tell you here's the changes that you could make based on this particular methodology. Um, and then we have those unique data insights, right? So quality score was where we started because we realized Google doesn't give you historical quality score. So if you're working on an account and somebody's asking you, are you doing better or worse than before, there's no way to answer that. It was really, really hard. So now the moment that you connect an account to Optimizer, um, we'll automatically start tracking each keyword's daily quality score, and then we'll chart that, we'll aggregate it to the account level. So we can tell you in 30 seconds what is your account level quality score without you having to go through that whole process of pivot tables and downloading reports, et cetera. Uh, we do have a two-week free trial, so uh, you know definitely sign up, give it a shot, and you got my email address on there. Um, like I said, we're six months old. We're still really new. We, we love feedback from users like you, and if there's something that you think we're not doing the best way we should, um, and it's not helping you as much as you wanted to, uh, we're all leaders. We, we love to build what our customers, what makes our customers more efficient. Very good stuff. Frederick, sincerely thank you. We appreciate it. This is, I, I, we're getting really good feedback from the audience. This has been a, a really good webinar, one of our best in terms of the information that is, has been disseminated by you, so we really appreciate it. Um, the, the other thing that I, I just want to make mention of so everybody, everybody understands, webinar has been recorded today. You're going to get an email tomorrow morning from Log My Calls that uh, has the webinar recording attached to it. So you feel free to share that within your organization and please share it on social media as well. Uh, and then the second thing is go to logmycalls.com slash webinar. Logmycalls.com slash webinar. You're going to see this. Well, webinar thanks everyone for, uh, for listening to me. Hope it was helpful. And uh, if there's any. I think Frederick cut out. So anyway, thank you everybody. We really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.